On October 18, 2006, a routine aerial photography mission near Prescott, Arizona turned deadly. A Piper PA-42 Cheyenne 3, registered as November 121 Charlie Sierra, was lost when its tail section separated in flight. Tragically, the airline transport pilot and all four passengers on board perished. The flight, operating under Part 91 regulations, had a specific purpose, to capture aerial photographs of a MiG-21 fighter jet, November 121 Uniform Tango. Before the flight, the pilots of both aircraft had discussed the flight plan, agreeing on a minimum altitude of 2,500 to 3,000 feet above the ground level, or AGL, and a minimum airspeed of 200 knots. Importantly, this was not intended to be a formation flight, and no minimum separation distance was established. The Cheyenne, November 121 Charlie Sierra, took off first, remained overhead, and waited for the departure of the MiG-21. Cheyenne 1 Charlie Sierra, on my 2 and left, position and hold. Seminal 258 Romeo Mike, Prescott Tower, Roger. Cheyenne 1 Charlie Sierra, wind variable at 6, fly runway heading, runway 2 and left, clear for takeoff. Seminal 8 Romeo Mike, approved. Seminal 8 Romeo Mike, fly runway heading, runway 2 and left, clear for takeoff. Charlie Sierra and say you request now. And you, it appears you're bending on the right side. I want Charlie Sierra to say again. Say so I am one Charlie Sierra. Appears that there's yet uh, some smoke or uh, something coming off the right side of your engine. I want Charlie Sierra. Things indicating normal. Do you still see it? Because we had a lot of water in the cowling. Say so I am one Charlie Sierra. It looks like a, it appears to be a vapor trail. Yes, and it's still coming out the right side. Charlie Sierra, say your request now. Come on, Charlie Sierra, we'd like to orbit overhead uh, the airport, wait for the MiG uh, to launch. Cheyenne 1 Charlie Sierra, Roger, remain on the runway heading. Contact Prescott Tower on 128.75 Bay. You can expect to turn to the right for your climb. Come on, Charlie Sierra, Roger. Shortly after the Cheyenne's departure, air traffic control reported observing what appeared to be smoke emanating from its right engine. Approximately 15 minutes after the Cheyenne's departure, the MiG-21 took off and flew straight out on a northeast heading. On departure, he experienced a problem retracting the landing gear, and noted that only the nose landing gear was successfully retracted. He recycled the landing gear handle and received a successful gear retraction indication. Uh, MiG, Experimental 2 on Uniform Tango is ready for departure on 3 right. Experimental 2 on Uniform Tango, Prescott Tower, hold short runway 3 right. Hold short 3 right, Experimental 2 on Uniform Tango. And Tower be advised, Experimental 2 on Uniform Tango will need about 30 seconds on the runway prior to departure. Experimental 1 Uniform Tango, runway 3 right, cleared for takeoff, straight out departure approved. Cleared for takeoff 3 right, Experimental 2 on Uniform Tango. And the Cheyenne's on our right base, will be in the campus, about to turn final for runway 3 left for Experimental 1 Uniform Tango. Experimental 2 on Uniform Tango, roll up. Experimental 1 Uniform Tango, you just going to go straight out or did you want a pattern? Experimental 1 Uniform Tango, press get there. Go ahead. Experimental 1 Uniform Tang, you just going out straight out northeast? Hey, firm, uh, we're going to be operating with that uh, Cheyenne. Experimental 1 Uniform Tango, proceed on course, frequency change approval, we'll see ya. And Airflight 357, the Cheyenne's just going north uh, eastbound, he's not on any ILS or anything, and then uh, ahead of him, approximately 3 miles of them, they get, uh, indicates 900,000, they're going to be maneuvering northeast of the airport. 357, we'll uh, Approximately 15 nautical miles northeast of the airfield, the two aircraft converged. The MiG pilot, grappling with the anomaly of his partially retracted landing gear, relayed the information to the Cheyenne crew. In response, the Cheyenne pilot, with perhaps well-intentioned but ultimately fateful words, offered to visually assess the MiG's condition in flight. To facilitate this close quarters observation, the MiG pilot ascended to 9,000 feet mean sea level, MSL, initiating a deliberate 30 degree right hand turn, maintaining a steady 200 knots with approach flaps deployed. It was in this turning configuration that the MiG pilot observed the Cheyenne join his 5 o'clock position. A fleeting moment of proximity, a prelude to the unforeseen catastrophe. Then, silence. 
About 30 seconds after last seeing the Cheyenne, the MiG pilot heard a partial transmission from the Cheyenne pilot regarding the right landing gear or gear door. When there was no follow-up, the MiG pilot attempted to contact the Cheyenne, but received no response. After a couple minutes, the MiG pilot spotted a column of smoke on the ground and alerted air traffic control. 2-1 uniform Django, first guitar. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how far away I am. I'm about uh, 15 miles to the northeast. Uh, I've got smoke and fire down here on the ground below me. I've lost contact with the aircraft that was flying with me. Do you have any LT? 3-4, turn base, runway 2 and up, clear land. Roger, turn base, clear land, 2-1, left, 3-4. Experimental 1, uniform, Tango, Roger. Are you going to uh, orbit right there, or uh, are you going to come inbound? Well, I'm going to orbit here momentarily until I get light enough on gas to land, and then I'm going to come in to land. Roger. Arrow 1, 7, Tango, holding your present position. Arrow 1, 7, Experimental 2, uniform, Tango, we just checked our backup radios. We are not receiving any LT at all. Can you give me the distance and, and approximate mileage? The subsequent investigation by the NTSB revealed a catastrophic in-flight breakup of the Cheyenne. The main wreckage, heavily damaged by the impact and fire, was found at 4,366 feet MSL. Crucially, the T-tail section, including the upper vertical stabilizer, the entire horizontal stabilizer, and the elevator separated in flight and came to rest about half a mile south of the main wreckage, at a higher elevation of 4,466 feet MSL. This separated tail section showed no signs of fire damage. There was no evidence of pre-existing cracks, corrosion, or loose fasteners in the area of the separations. Radar data indicated that the Cheyenne joined the MiG on the inside of the right-hand turn, descending from above to approximately 100 feet below the MiG. The last radar return with altitude information placed both aircraft at 7,900 feet MSL, just moments before the accident. A passenger in the MiG reported hearing the MiG pilot instruct the Cheyenne pilot to go ahead and fly under the airplane and check. The Prescott airport manager corroborated this, stating he overheard the Cheyenne pilot say he would drop down and go underneath, and let you know how it looks. Experimental 1 Uniform Tango, 1 Able Squad 5, 2, 1, 1. Three minutes ready to turn inbound with uh, information hotel, please. Okay, Experimental one uniform tango, sir. Say request. Uh, I'd like to turn in, uh, make it straight into two on left. Low approach, have you look over my aircraft uh, as best you can see me and then turn down into land. Experimental one uniform tango, make straight in runway two on left, report five mile final, no altitude restriction. National Transportation Safety Board's final determination regarding the probable cause of this tragic accident was as follows. The failure of the pilot following a jet aircraft to maintain adequate separation from the high-velocity jet core exhaust, the separation of the T-tail upper section vertical stabilizer of the following aircraft due to contact with the high-velocity jet core exhaust was a factor. The tragedy above Prescott underscores a critical lesson even well-intentioned close proximity maneuvers around jet aircraft can have catastrophic consequences. The in-flight breakup of the Cheyenne 3, likely due to the MiG's jet exhaust, serves as a somber reminder of the unseen dangers in the sky. <laughs>